Thumbs up, ready to begin. All right, I will give people a couple more minutes, but before we do that, everyone who knows me knows I start off every session with the famous international math salute. So if you're with me last time, you know what the math salute is. I taught it last time and I know you can do it. Perfect, because your homework was to practice it. For those that are new today, I will teach you the math salute right now. And I can see that Gio is already doing it. Okay, here goes. You need to put your water cups down. If you have got your morning coffee, put it down. If you've got your pencil and paper, put them down because you need your arms completely free. So the international math salute goes as follows. Put your arms right out front and make them look really big on the screen. Have really big hands on the screen. Then you go right hand over left hand. Okay, that's the hard part, right over left. Then you go palm to palm. Then the salute gets weird. You wiggle your little fingers. Then you wiggle your thumbs. Then you wiggle your little fingers again. And then when you're ready, just come on back. Whoa. 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 Oh, some people did it. Some people were here last time. I'll do it again. I'll do it standing up so you can see me. So, arms out front, right hand over left hand. So you can really see there's my right hand over my left hand, right over left, palm to palm, wiggle, 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 and then come on back. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. For those that are new, you don't know what I'm doing, I'm happy to give away the secret. So I might end up a little bit early today. So if we end a bit early today, you can stay on and say, James, James, type into chat. Tell me how to do the international math salute and I will reveal it to you. So for those that are stuck wondering how I did that, I will give the secrets away, but we'll leave that to the end of the day. Because today we're going to do Adventures in Exploding Dots. This is lesson number two of the whole series of Adventure Dot Story. So, um, what today is going to feel a bit like deja vu, but to show you what I mean by that, let me start by sharing my screen. Uh, I was fussing. Can you see a photograph of a student back in Tanzania doing a, something on a chalkboard? Can I get some thumbs up for people that can actually see my screen? Is it working? Yes, it's working. All right, so welcome to lesson two of Exploding Dots, and we're going to begin by going from Tanzania to some French, deja vu. So for those that may have missed lesson one, I want to just sort of give a, a variation of what happened last week. So this is a recap of last week and a way to maybe help you come through um, with understanding what we're doing today. So last week I started with a puzzle, a mind reading trick, but now I'm doing a different mind reading trick today just to get us going. So this time I've got six groups of numbers. So I see the number one, number two, number three, four, five, there's a six, seven, eight, there's a 19, 11, there's a 12 somewhere, I hope there's 12 somewhere in this, yep, there's 12, 13, 14, that all the numbers from one up to 26 appear among these groups. In fact, some numbers are repeated, you can see that 26 appears several places. So I've got all the numbers here from one to 26 in this mysterious set of groups. And last time we played with the numbers one through 31 and we played a birthday game, but now I'm just doing the pure mathematics. The idea is to choose a number at random between one and 26, and maybe I'll choose 26. And what I want you to do is tell me which groups do you see the number 26? For example, we saw 26 in group B, we saw it in group D, and we saw it in group F. So I can see it in three groups, B, D, and F. All right, so I want you to each think of a number. Uh, could be something like three, or it could be like 20, or it could be one. Okay, so I chose three. Actually, I think I only see three in one number, group C then I'd write C. So everyone, right now, choose a number between one and 26. And then in the chat window, don't tell me what your number was, just tell me in which groups you see it. It could be three groups, it could be all six groups, it could be just one group. Whichever group you see your number in, uh, just type the groups. And I will see if I can read your minds as the chat window goes by of all the different things that people say. So Dala, for example, has her number in B and C. She says it appears in groups B and C. I bet she's thinking the number five. Uh, Jed had D and F. I bet Jed is actually thinking the number 24. Whoa, Victoria has a uh, C and E. So a lot of people have two letters, okay? Victoria said C and E. I bet her number is 12. Whoa, whoa, oh, someone, oh, it just went by so fast. Someone did A, C, E. There's three letters there, A, C, E. I bet that number is 13. Someone just said, did B, C, E. B, C, E, B, C, and E. I bet your number is 14. 
BCE14. Uh, DEF. Did we do DEF? No, we haven't done DEF. Someone said DEF just went by. I bet your number is, oh, the big one. It's probably, I don't believe you had that number. I don't believe that number's between, uh, uh, is on the board. Try again. ADF. Or maybe we meant ADF. Okay, ADF. ADF. I might believe that one. Um, ADF, I believe, is the number 25. Whoa, whoa, BE. Don't think we had BE that slipped by the screen. I, I didn't see the name on it. Uh, BE, uh, what is BE? So I was looking at the picture. I expect that's number 11. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so, so, okay. This is what we did last time and we got very confused by what was happening and then we figured out the puzzle, but this one seems to be a different puzzle. So for those that were here last time, do you remember what the trick was when I was doing that mind reading trick? What was I looking in these group numbers to be able to read people's minds? Anyone want to unmute themselves and just tell me what, uh, what you remember from last time? Numbers, numbers of the group. I missed the first part. Can you say the first part of your sentence again? The first numbers of the group yes. and then you add them together. Yes, I was doing something very sneaky. I was looking at the first top left numbers of each group. In this case, one, two, three, six, nine, and 18. So for example, when someone says B and E, I said, oh, B and E, I went to the two numbers in that group, B and E, and I saw the top left corners were two and nine, and I know that number was 11. When someone said A, D, and F, I went to A, D, and F, and I saw the numbers one, six, and 18 were the beginning of the groups, I knew that number was 25. So that time, this time, I'm doing something very sneaky about the numbers one, two, three, six, nine, and 18. Last time we did something very sneaky with the numbers one, two, four, eight, and 16 instead. But obviously I wanna to start today's lesson by bouncing off of what we did last time and see how powerful we can make these mind reading tricks. So to catch people up from last time, the numbers we played with were one, two, four, eight, and 16, because we were playing with what's called a two, one machine last time. So to catch people up, a two one machine. The idea is that you're in these machines, it's just a row of boxes that go as far to the left as I desire. And the idea is you always put in dots in the boxes. If I put in one dot, zoom, one dot goes to the rightmost box and stays as one dot. Not very exciting. Put in a second dot, always the rightmost box, zoom. Now I've got two dots in the box, but whenever there are two dots in the box, kaboom, they explode, they become one dot, one place to the left. So two dots in the machine become nothing, 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 one dot, zero dots. Three dots in the machine. Here it comes, here's the third dot. Zoom. Always the rightmost box. So that's nothing, 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 nothing. One, one. Putting in a fourth dot is really fun. Here it comes, the rightmost box. Zoom. Kaboom! Dot. Two dots explode to become one. Kabow! Dot. Four is one, zero, zero. One dot, one, zero dots, zero dots. Does anyone remember from last time what 13 is? Maybe type in the chat if you like. Was it 101? Actually, I think five is gonna be 101. Put in one more dot, here it comes, zoom. That's five. Oh, 110, is it 110? I have a feeling six is 110. Put it in, here comes the sixth dot, zoom. Kabow, dot. 110 is six. 13 is 1101. Because we learned last time, we learned last time how these machines work is as follows. Dots here are always worth one. Two of these, two ones, kapow! Make one of those, two ones is two. Two of these, two twos, must be worth one of these, kaboom! This must be worth two twos, two twos is four. And two of these, two fours, kabooms! Make one of those, this must be worth two fours, which is eight. So we saw that 13 was one dot, one dot, no dots, one dot, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one. And we saw that's correct. There it is. One dot, one dot, no dots, one dot, an eight, a four, no twos, and one. One eight and one four and one one does indeed add up to 13. There was the two one code for 13. Beautiful. So that's what we did last time, but clearly I'm now doing something different with the numbers one, two, three, six, nine, and 18 this time. 
So what's going on that I can keep playing these mind reading games with different sets of numbers. So today's lesson, now I've caught everyone up, is let's have extra fun. Last time we did the 2-1 machine and had loads of fun. Now I want to say, oh, oh, why stick with the number two? Let's start getting wild. What if I did instead of a 2-1 machine, I started playing with a 3-1 machine. In this case, I want now three dots will explode. Kaboom! To become one. Three dots explode. Kabow! To become one, and so on. So let's work out some codes in a 3-1 machine. That sounds like fun. Let's do it. If I put in one dot, zoom. Dots always go in the rightmost box. Stays as one dot. Not very exciting. Put in a second dot. Here it comes. Zoom. Always the rightmost box. But this time, nothing happens because I need three dots to explode to become one. So it stays as two dots. However, put in a third dot. Zoom. Kabow! Three become one. So now for three dots, the code is nothing, nothing, nothing. One, zero. One, zero. Four. Here comes the fourth dot. Zoom. Okay. Four is one, one. Here comes the fifth dot. Zoom. Five is one, two. Okay, in the chat, can you see in your mind's eye what the code for number six is going to be in this three one machine? One zero zero two zero one zero zero two zero two zero one zero zero. I can't see. Oh, I'm sorry if you can't see. I don't know what to do. Hopefully, you can, uh, hope it's showing. Two zero two zero two. Okay, lots of bit, lots of one zero Point. zeros and lots of two zeros. Which is it? It was like two zeros is missing. Okay, here goes. I'm going to put in the six dots. So five is one dot, two dots. Here comes the six dot. Zoom. Kaboom! Dot. Ah, yes, it was two zero, it turns out. Beautiful. Okay, you know me. I'm going to be crazy. What's the code for 13 in a 3 1 machine? Whoa, okay. Okay, I'm going to write down the answers I'm seeing. I'm seeing. One 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 four one. One one one's lots of times. One 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 one. One one one. One one one. I see hi. Hi. One one one. One one one. Oh my goodness. What? Okay, okay. All right. What is going on here? So it looks like most people are saying one one one. Here goes. Uh oh, 13. 13. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen dots. There's thirteen dots. I'm actually going to do it. Three dots explode to become one. Here goes. Kaboom! Dot. Kajing! Dot. Kajlubal! Dot. Kaflingle! Dot. And there's that one dot left over. Oh, so it looks like the answer four one is correct. Okay, four one works. So there's four dots, one dot. Except, except it goes further. What happens? Another explosion. Kableeble blop. Dot. So actually, you're right. One dot, one dot, one dot. One, one, one is correct. Four, one is also correct, except you can go a little bit further and make it one, one, one instead. Beautiful, beautiful. So how is this machine working? What, what's really going on with these codes? Can we make sense of it? Well, the idea is, uh, maybe we need to draw a clean picture that's getting messy. It's like what we did last time for a 2-1 machine, so now it's a 3-1 machine, where dots here are always worth one, one dot, one dot, one dot. Three ones, three of those ones makes kaboom, one of these, that must be worth three ones. Three ones is a three. And three of these, kaboom, make one of those, this must be worth three threes. Oh, it must be, uh, what's three threes? Three and three and a three makes nine. And three of these, if you kept going, kaboom, make one of those. This must be worth a nine, a nine, a nine. That's three nines. That's worth uh, 27. If we kept going, what's the next dot going to have to be worth? Can you tell it to me in chat? Yes, yeah, so it would kaboom to 81. Okay, if I kept going, okay, I don't know if this is fun or not. What's, what's the next number? Kaboom to the ne next number. What's after 81? 243. If we went after 243, what's the next number? 729. If we go after 279, 729, what's the next number? 
Yeah, I agree. Hard. Okay, hard. Hard. Stop there. Stop there. But that's enough. But that's enough. So you told me 13 was 111. Let's check that. You're saying it's 1 dot, 1 dot, 1 dot. Beautiful. I see that's correct. 19 and 13 and 11 does indeed make 13. That's absolutely correct. Beautiful. Welcome. We have just discovered base three, how to write numbers in codes of uh, base three. This is wonderful. But then, but then I had another epiphany, another wild insight. Instead of doing a two-one machine or a three-one machine, I could also do a four-one machine, or I could do a five-one machine, or a seven-one machine, or let's go crazy. Let's do a ten-one machine. Let's go all the way up to a ten-one machine. In fact, let's be extra crazy. I want to know what the secret code is for the number 273 in a 10-1 machine. What is the secret code for 10-1 machine? Number 273 in a 10-1 machine. Whoa. This is insane. All right, I'm seeing 273, 10,000, 1,000, lots of people chatting away about other things. Okay, chatting about maths will be good too. Um, all right, what is, okay, okay, it's all over the place. So I'm going to do it. We have plenty of time together today. We have another at least 26 minutes. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to put in 273 dots in a 10 on machine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, And as soon as someone tells me in chat, say, stop, we have enough, I will say, I'll believe you, we have enough. As soon as someone says, stop, I'll believe you. Stop. Okay, that's 273. Bingo. There are 273 dots in a 10 one machine. Got it. Now, my first question, how am I going to work this out? Will there be some explosions? That's a yes, no question. Will there be some explosions? And I bet the answer is yes. There's gonna be lots of explosions because every 10 explodes to make one. So we have a kabing dot, kajoop dot, kablibble dot, blip dot. Actually, how many explosions will there be initially? How many explosions will happen amongst those dots there? If you think about it, oh, there's 27, 273 dots. That's 27 groups of 10. Okay, I'm with you. People are saying in chat, 27 groups of 10, leaving three behind. All right. Kaboom dot, kazing dot, kazoop dot, kazoop dot, blip dot, glip dot, glip dot, glip dot. I do that 27 times. So there's 27 explosions. Uh, makes 27 dots over here. Okay, I'm getting bored. Can I just write the number 27 there for 27 dots? Um, any dots left behind? 27 explosions from 273. Yeah, leaves three dots behind. So then they will draw them in big, big red color. Yeah, one dot behind, one dot behind, one dot behind. So I'll be left with three dots behind. Okay. So there's 27 dots there. Will there be any more explosions? You betcha. Two more explosions and two more explosions. Kaboom dot, gazing dot. And any dots left behind? Yes, I think there'll be seven dots left behind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots left behind. Two dots there. I can now see that the magic the secret code for 273 in a 10 mon machine is two dots seven dots, three dots. People were right. The secret code for 273 is 273. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay, so what's, what's really going on here? What's really going on? Um, hmm, hmm, how am I gonna think about this? Well, I guess I'll think about the same way I was doing before. It's like, uh, let's analyze this very carefully. Dots there are always worth one. We said one dot, one dot, one dot. But now 10 of these, do I have 10 of these little chip things? I don't know, is that 10? And now 10 would explode, kaboom, to make one there. So this must be worth 10 of those. 10 ones is 10. And 10 of these, 10 tens, that's 10 of them. Kaboom, ah, ah, dot. Makes one of these, this must be worth 10 tens, which is 100. And 10 of these makes one of those, this must be worth 1,000 and so on and so on. Bingo. This is actually the 10 one machine with dots worth one, 10, 100, thousands, 10, thousands, 100, thousands, millions, and so on and so on and so on. And in fact, in fact, this is exactly the machine that we use in everyday society today. We write our numbers in a 10 one machine. We, these are the actual codes. 
In fact, we even say our numbers in a 10 mon machine. Because if I was to write this number out in English words, this is 200, oops, 273. Ooh, oh, terrible handwriting, terrible handwriting. But the idea is 273. You can see we literally say 200. There they are, 200s, 200s. Seven T. That T Y in English is short for 10. And look, there are seven tens. There are literally seven tens and three. Bingo, there are three ones. We literally speak 10 one machine. This is base 10. This is what we in the Western world definitely do. We use base 10 to write numbers and to say numbers. Actually, so here's a question. Here's a question. Why do we humans like the number 10 so much when it comes to doing arithmetic and counting and all the rest? What is it about us humans that think 10 is a very good number to play with? If you think about it for a while, you think, okay, we humans, what do we humans like about the number 10? Well, we think it's so easy mathematically because we've trained ourselves to think about it, but what made the very first people say 10 was the way to go with? It's probably because of this, because we are creatures born with these 10 things on the end of our hands. So we see these things all the time and we think, hey, these are great for counting. So we naturally came to associate 10 because of our physiology. Most people are born with 10 fingers and we think 10 is a great number for counting. Beautiful, beautiful. There it is, base 10 because of this. In fact, we even call these individual things, fingers and thumbs, but we call them also digits. And guess what we call individual things here? We call each of these things digits. Have you ever noticed that we use the word digit both in math for the individual numbers and for our individual fingers and thumbs? And that's not a coincidence because we really were thinking about our fingers when we thought of base 10. So we humans love base 10 because we think of this. Though, I have to point out, and some people said it in chat, some society went base 20. They thought 20 was a very good natural number for us humans to count with. So why were people thinking base 20? What made them think 20 was good for some humans? Hmm. Why would 20 be a good number for humans to think of as a natural number to count with? Fingers and toes. Apparently people are very aware of their toes as well as their fingers. They often, some people went base 20. In fact, I live in America right now. And you think about a very famous address, the Gettysburg Address address by Abraham Lincoln, Abe Lincoln. Does anyone have to know American history? Does anyone know how the Gettysburg Address begins? It's probably a lot to type into a chat. Um, I'm not American, so I didn't grow up no knowing this, but I know it now. Abraham Lincoln started his, his, his speak speech with this, these words, four score and seven years ago. And then he went on and on and on. Okay, four score and seven years ago. How many years is that? Yes, this is really interesting because it turns out score is an old word for 20. So he's really saying four twenties and seven years ago. So four twenties and seven is 87. He was speaking a little bit of base 20. Four twenties and seven years ago is the number 87. We say 87. 87, eight tens and seven. He was saying four twenties and seven. He was speaking base 20. In fact, there are vestiges of base 20 in many languages. For example, I don't know if anyone here speaks French, but how do you say 87 in French? Okay, this is terrible. I actually don't know how to write French. I think it's quatre, is there an R in there? Maybe there's not an R in there. Quatre vingt set. Uh oh, I do not know French at all. But if you learn French, you literally say four twenties. That's the word for four. That's the word for 24, twenties and seven. French say 87 as four score and seven. We speak base 20 right there. So some languages still have base 20 in them, which is amazing, which is just fabulous. Um, actually, let me tell you, some cultures thought going base 12 was a very good thing to do. They thought 12 was a natural number for us humans. Why do you humans think that 12 could be a very good number for counting and doing arithmetic? Hmm, yes, we definitely have 12 months. The question is which came first, 12 months or the niceness of the number 12? But 12 comes up, a, that's a good point. 12 comes a lot, up a lot in everyday society. 
Hmm. So let's talk about that. All right, all right, all right. So, so let, me, let me give it away. So the people say there's a very natural way to count to 12 on one hand. Here's one hand. We have these four very long digits that are naturally broken into three sections. Do you see the three sections of your hand? We've got this really handy pointer. If you look to this day, there are many people on this planet, um, some parts of India, some parts of Southeast Asia in particular, that count to 12 this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. But you'll see some people do it, and I bet some people on this call count that way. But if you do it with two hands, I just did one set of 12. Now I'll do a second set of 12. Now I'll do a third set of 12. But you can actually get up to the number 144 on your two hands counting this way, which is amazing. So some cultures went base 12, maybe because of this. Mathematical historians aren't completely sure. But, but you're right. The number 12 comes up in everyday life all the time. Because how many items are in a dozen? 12. How many inches in a foot? 12. We often have the number 12 in everyday measures of weights and how to do trade. And here's a reason for it. 12 is actually a really nice number. Because if you're like, you know, at the market and you want to buy loaves of bread and eggs and so forth, a dozen eggs, sometimes you don't want 12 eggs. You might say, no, no, I want a fraction of them. I'd like, I'd like half a dozen, please. Or I'd like a third of a dozen or a quarter of a dozen. These are very common fractions that come up in everyday life. So if you're thinking of the number 12, like dozens or so forth, or inches, or maybe for like half a foot, a third of a foot, a quarter of a foot, these are really nice. Half of 12 is six. A third of a 12 is four. A quarter of 12 is, a, is three. These are really nice fractions for the number 12. For the number 10, okay, half a 10 is nice, that's five. A quarter of a 10 is a little bit icky, two and a half, you're into fractions. A third of a 10 is just horrible. So in everyday fractions that come up in life, 10 is actually very awkward. So a lot of people go with 12 because actually in everyday life, 12 is a handy number. And some societies actually went with the number 12 because maybe because of this, maybe because of trades and measures, maybe because we'd subdivide everything into 12, like 12 months in a year. Oh, oh, here's a question. How many hours are in a day? It's a little bit of a trick question. If we say 24, haha, think about it. I said in a day. Think about the very first clocks. The very first clocks were sundials. Sundials don't work at night. So people didn't bother measuring time at night because they couldn't. So they just said, oh, we'll just measure the daylight hours. And how many daylight hours do we have? It's 12. And then when people could start measuring time at night as well, they said, well, okay, let's do another 12 for night. And now we have 24 hours and the full day and night experience. So actually 24 hours a day really comes from the number 12. By the way, I should actually be honest there, I'm doing a story here. The ancient Egyptians actually only divided the day into 10 hours at first. But then they said, there's this weird, funny twilight zone at the beginning for sunrise, and this weird, funny twilight zone at the end for sunset, where it's like a bit hazy. Is this, is this daylight or not? So they actually had two extra hours and 10 main hours. So they actually end up saying, well, we've got 12 all up, but uh, that's how we got to 12 from, from the ancient Egyptians. Very curious, very curious. All right, all right. So now we know that we are living in a society that speaks 10-1 machine. I've lost my page of 10-1 machine. Uh, okay, we'll do it again. The 10-1 machine, we live in a society that speaks base 10, 10 one, which is based on the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, and so on. So when I write a number like 8,243, I literally am saying 8,000s, 200s, four T, four tens, and three. There it is. We live in a base 10 society. So what we're going to do for the remainder of this little set of lessons, lessons three, four, five, six, is actually keep playing in this machine because that's what society expects us to play in. So we'll go through all of the mathematics we learn in school and do it in a 10 run machine because that's what society wants. And that'll be fine and fun. And I'll show you some really crazy ways to think about the math you already know and do it in an astounding new light. But, but playing with other machines can be fun. Let me go back to the mind reading trick I started with today based on the three one machine. So the mind reading trick was based on these strange cards based on these numbers. What I'll do is I'll put in the chat uh, when I finish chatting, 
um, a link to where you can find these, these numbers yourself. So you don't have to copy them down right now if you're interested. But a copy of this entire lesson will be in the chat when I, when I upload it. So you get copies of this and everything we did today. But I want to explain what I was doing about the numbers 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. There's something magical going on that let me do this, this beginning trick. And it was based on a 3-1 machine. Not a 10-1, not a 2-1, but a 3-1 machine. So what was I doing? What was I doing? So let's just go back to a 3-1 machine for the moment. If you remember, dots here are always worth one. Three of these makes one of those. Three of these makes one of those. Three of these makes one of those. And so on, and so on. Okay, and uh, we did some codes. I think we got some codes going. If I remember the codes we got, was one was just one dot, two is just two dots. I think that's right. One dot, yep, two dots, no explosions. Three explodes, here goes, three dots, kaboom, one, zero. Uh, four we had was one, one. Five we had was one, two. Six we had, I remember doing it, was two, zero. Thirteen we had was one, one, one. Okay, so they're the codes I think we had before. So what am I doing? All right, so in that card reading trick, I asked you to think of a number between one and 26. One and 26. Why 26? That's a weird number. But what is the code for the number 26 in a 3-1 machine? Can we work out what, why, what was special about 26 in this? So maybe in chat, you can figure out 26. What's the code for the number 26 in a 3-1 machine? How would I make 26 using these numbers? 1, 3, 9, and 27. Oh, I can see right away I don't need the 27. I don't need 27 at all. don't need that at all. What combination of 9, 3s, and 1s makes 26? Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a couple of answers. For example, 1001 is way too big. That's 28. 127 and 11 one makes 8. But I'm seeing people doing this. Two of these, two of these, and two of these. Whoa, whoa. So you need two, 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 which makes sense, actually, because look at this. If that's 13, double 13 must be two, two, two. Oh, all hangs together. That's pretty. That's beautiful. All right. So I went, okay, I went all the way from one to 26. All right. 26 was two, two, two. One is just one. Actually, it looks like I can be a little more careful. One is nothing, nothing, one, if I want to do that, zero, zero, one. So I went through all the three-digit codes of a 3-1 machine, from zero, zero, one, all the way up to two, two, two. That's the biggest I could go, because if I put in one more dot, I think it's going to be crazy. Here it comes. One more dot, zoom, cow, dot, kaboom, dot, kajing, dot, and I'm beyond three digits. Because 27 would be 1000. Zero, zero, zero. All right. So I obviously went from 1 to 26, which were all the three digit codes you could possibly get from a 3 1 machine. Bingo. So all I did, I'm going to be sneaky to show you my game. Don't need the 27s, so they can go away. So if someone chose a number like, uh, I don't know, what's a good number? Let's say 14. If they chose 14, I could see that would be one of these. One of these, oh no, what's 14? Oh, how do I get 14? 12, 13, 14, thank you. One, one of these, one of these, two of these. Now, 14, in which groups does the number 14 appear? Where do we see the 14? I see it in group B. I see it in group C, and I see it in group E. Okay, I see it as part of group E, so there's a nine. I see it as part of group C, which is a three, and I see it as part of group uh, B, which is a two. How does that compare to its code? Uh-oh, how do I fit this on the page? Uh-oh, uh-oh, screen challenge. You can see what I did. I made sure I put 14 in the card that represents two ones. And I made sure I put 14 in the card that represents three, and I also made sure I put 14 in the card that represents nine. I wanted one nine, one three, and two ones to get 14. 
Now you can probably see how my trick is working. How my trick is working. Uh, let's choose another number. Uh, my picture's getting really messy here. Let's draw, draw it again. So here's a three one machine. One, three, nine. Let's choose another number. Let's choose, I know, 22. How do I get 22? I think I need two nines. That uh, gets me to 18. Uh, one, three, and one, one. I think it does 22, doesn't it? So I want two, one, 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 two, nine. So I want an 18. I want one, three, I just want a three. And one, one, I want one. So let's see, where do I put the number 22? 22 appears here in group A. 22 appears in uh, C. And 22 also appears in F. That is, aha, I chose one, 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 three, and two nines. There it is, two nines, there's the 18. I want a group F. Group three, one, three, I put in group C, one, one, put in group one. So I can see the numbers one, two, one, and two ones, three and two threes, nine and two nines are really just encoding base three codes of numbers. And I just made sure I put every number in the right group for its, for its boxes as it appears in its code. That's how the three one mind reading trick work. Whoa, whoa. Okay, people are getting it now. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now, remember, I've got all, I'll put this up in the, in the chat, a PDF of how to get all this stuff. But let's get really crazy because my mind says that every problem solved, everything understood is really an invitation for more. Here is something completely, completely insane. Here's another mind reading trick. This one has both positive and negative numbers. This time, I want you to think of a number between negative and 10 all the way up to 21. For example, if I'm thinking of, say, uh, four, I say, okay, where do I see the number four? I see the number four in group C, and that's all I see it in. Okay, if you think of the number negative four, Okay, that's between negative 10 and 21. Where do I see negative four? I see it in group B. Do I see it anywhere else? I see it in group C. And that's all I see it in. All right. I bet if someone typed in a chat, they thought of a number between negative 10 and 21, and told me which groups it's in, I'll be able to predict what that number is. Someone says just A. If you're thinking just A, I bet your number is 16. A, B, D, E, uh oh, A, B, D, E, A, B, D, E, I bet your number is seven. Now, I now, I know you know what I'm doing. Obviously, I'm looking at the top left numbers, but the top left numbers this time are weird. I was playing this game with base two last lesson. I was playing this game with base three this lesson. What on earth am I doing now with those crazy numbers? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that as a mystery. I put that at the end of the lesson. If you wanna play with this, these cards and these numbers, feel free. It's really crazy. Oh, someone says A and B. If you're thinking A and B, you're choosing the number eight. C and B, I know you're thinking uh, negative four. Whoa, someone just chose E, I know you're thinking the number one. Someone just chose B, I know you're thinking the number eight. negative eight. Okay, loads of fun, loads of fun. But the question is, is this a, what am I doing? How can I get negative numbers in this game? Whoa, that's crazy. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because I need to fumble making sure I get the right link for you to put into chat. So now I'm back on camera. I need to leave Zoom for just a second and find my chat window. Let's find my, um, my, my, Oh, where's my, where is it? Where is it? Lesson two, there's, I found the URL for lesson two. Back to Zoom. It's good to, fun, to watch me fumble. I'm very good at fumbling. Back to the chat. Uh, I want to send this to everyone. Make sure everyone sees it. All panelists and all attendees. That's everyone. Here is the lesson two. 
if you want to look at this later on, what we did today and all the crazy things I did extra, bingo, there it is. You now have the URL to lesson two that we did today. So on that note, I'm going to stop there because lesson three is going to get into wild and weird English language and wild and weird mathematics of all the math you thought you knew so well. But this gives us a few minutes right now for anyone that wants to stay on and be taught the international math salute because they missed it last time. I'm happy to teach you the international math salute right now. So on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for those that would like to go and head off. Feel free to head off. Thank you for coming along. For those who want to stay on for just like two, three more minutes to learn what, how the salute works, I will give all of my secrets away because I'm that generous today. I want to give away all my secrets. So thanks for coming along and I'll give people a chance to, to click off if they want to. And for those that stay on, I will share the math salute. Those crazy numbers. I know we have crazy numbers there. Can I do everything I was just doing today with negative numbers? It makes no sense. It's crazy. How does it work? How does it work? Yes, yeah, some people are staying on for the math salute. Great. So go to the chat window. Maybe I need to type that URL again because it's disappeared. There's the URL again. You want to see today's lesson and all the cards that are in it. Yes, put it up again. I put it up again. There it is. Great. All right. Everyone that's here, we have, looks like, about two or three minutes. I'm now going to teach you the international math salute. If you missed it last time, here it is. This salute is weird, as you've now seen. It goes arms out front, right hand over left hand, okay? But here's the thing. I'm about to go palm to palm, but when most people go palm to palm, they twirl their thumbs in opposite directions. That's what feels natural and normal. And I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not twirling my thumbs in opposite directions. I'm actually twirling my thumbs in the same direction to my left. My thumbs are going in parallel to the left. Because then I'm ready to come on back. Whoa, whoa. Thumbs turn to the left in parallel and all the wiggle, 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 and I'm ready to come on back. Now that's, that's what I'm doing. So how can I help you get that as well? Because that, that takes like a while to get practice on. So the idea is this. So here's, I'll give it a couple of ways. One way is to imagine you're holding a big red rubber ball. It has to be red. So imagine you're holding a big red rubber ball. And just imagine turning that red rubber ball upside down. Yes, like, just like Laura, Lara's doing. Excellent. And then actually, if you go palm to palm, so you have to drop your ball now, I guess, then you can do wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You'll be set to come back. So that's the motion I'm doing. It's like that, except somehow you want to do that same motion while your wrists are touching. So that might help you figure out what's going on. That, that often helps some people, but it doesn't help everyone, but there's an idea to help some people. If that doesn't help, it didn't help me, I'm not one of those people, it turns out. Here's, here, let me break it down even more. So let me do it one hand at a time, but I'll do it sideways so you can see me. All right, arms out front, right over left. Okay, each hand will turn 180 degrees. Your thumbs are currently upwards, your thumbs will be pointing downwards. But let's do it one hand at a time. Let's do your top hand, your right hand, Thumb is up, just turn your thumb down. There's no tricks there. Just turn your thumb down the way it feels normal. All the tricks are happening with the bottom hand, the left hand. Your thumb is up. Let's turn 180 degrees in a way that feels wrong. Turn your thumb towards your palm. In fact, make your thumb touch your palm. In fact, have your, palm, your thumb keep touching your palm. Slide down your palm. It feels so wrong. Keep sliding down. Ow, ouch, ouch. But then your palm to palm, ready to clasp your fingers, wiggle, 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 and then you're ready to come on back. So maybe that helps, maybe that helps. Top hand, just do it. It's all with the bottom hand, thumb towards your palm, keep going down your palm, and then you come back. So once you practice that for a while, then you can start practicing doing that simultaneously, and then you're totally set for the salute. Wow, some people got it. Let me post the URL for the lesson again, some people are missing it. But also, if you go to the uh, Ames Maths Communities page, I believe they're posting all these URLs as well. So you'll, you'll find them there as well. So everything we've done today I, is probably could be fast paced, in which case, no worries. Look at the lesson and you'll be fine. You've got all the materials there. Plus, we'll be doing these over and over again throughout the entire year and during Global Math Week, which starts in a couple of weeks, October 10th. Um, so lots of exploring dots all across the planet. Thank you so much for coming today. And I'll see you next week for lesson two. Excellent. Bye, everyone. Bye.